Welcome to our online. In this video, we're going to explore the spring constant of a diatomic molecule. In this case, again, we're going to use carbon monoxide, which has a single carbon atom and a single oxygen atom. And it turns out that through observation, we've seen that the energy frequency, the radiation that is either absorbed or emitted by a carbon monoxide molecule, has an energy of 0.27 electron volts which means that the energy absorbed or emitted is in the infrared range, below the visible light range. So we know that the energy of a photon is equal to Planck's constant times the frequency of the photon, so we can set that equal to 0.27 electron volts. And now let's go ahead and relate the term that we use for the energy of a photon to h bar omega. Now we know that the frequency can be written as omega divided by 2 pi, and h divided by 2 pi is equal to h bar, so h times the frequency is the same as h bar times omega, omega being the angular frequency of the oscillation. So if we then come back over here, we can then see that omega, and basically the basic frequency of the molecule, we usually write it as omega sub naught, or f sub naught, this is the frequency of oscillation, this is the angular frequency of oscillation, so omega is hf divided by h bar, so you can say that here we have omega is equal to hf divided by h bar, and hf is 0.27 electron volts divided by h bar, and h bar is h divided by 2 pi, so the 2 pi goes to the numerator. Now, if we want to work this out, we can say that the angular frequency of a carbon oxide molecule is equal to 2 pi times the energy in electron volts. We convert that to joules. We divide that by Planck's constant, and we end up with 4.1 times 10 to the 14 oscillations per second. Now, these are angular. Those are not oscillations. This is the angular frequency, so let me take that back for a moment. The actual oscillations per second can be found by taking this divided by 2 pi, and it turns out that a carbon monoxide molecule vibrates at a rate of 65 trillion vibrations per second. So that's the, the base vibration of a carbon monoxide molecule. If we then go back to the equation where the angular frequency is equal to the square root of k over m, m being the reduced mass, which we found in a previous video, which was equal to this value right here for a carbon monoxide molecule, now we're going to use this equation to find k, now that we know the vibrational frequency of the molecule, based on the observed emission or absorption of the energy by that molecule. So then we see that k can be defined as omega squared times the reduced mass. Omega squared times the reduced mass gives us 1926 newtons per meter. So the spring constant equivalent of a diatomic molecule like carbon monoxide, the spring constant can then be measured to be 1926 newtons per meter, which this number is actually fairly close to the actual observed value. Now you may say, well, wait a minute, how does 1 over second squared times kilogram become newtons per meter? Well, it turns out if we take kilogram per second squared and multiply both the top and the bottom by meters, now we have kilogram meters per second squared, which is newton, and meters on the bottom. So yes, indeed, it is newtons per meter. So here you can see that for a typical carbon monoxide molecule, a typical diatomic molecule, the spring constant is in the order of 2,000 newtons per meter, and the vibrational frequency is in the order of many trillions of vibrations per second. And because of that, now you can see that as that molecule absorbs energy, it will keep jumping up. So each delta energy from one level to the next level will mean that the molecule absorbed this much energy. So the, so the difference in energy would be h bar omega, and h bar omega is equal to 0.27 electron volts as it jumps from one level to another, or when the molecule emits that amount of energy, it then drops one energy level at a time each time the molecule emits a particular photon of that particular uh, energy level. And so that's how we have the relationship between the absorption and the emission of energy by a diatomic molecule, which acts like a like a oscillator, a quantum mechanic oscillator, and therefore the energy can only jump with quantum jumps equal to the amount of energy that it can absorb in terms of the photons that it absorbs or also emits. And based upon that, we can also then find the equivalent spring constant of that molecule. And that's how it all ties together, and it's pretty interesting stuff.